trust you're good. And that's why we speak the name of Jesus. We speak the name of Jesus over this entire assembly today. God, because you are good. Lord, you are God over every sickness, over every disease, over every trial. Lord, every, every struggle with sin. God, and we thank you for your love on us. We thank you for this beautiful day where the natural sun is shining. But we're more thankful, Lord, that you, the Son of God, have shined into our hearts to give us life, to give us hope, to give us strength, to give us a future. And Lord, I just pray today that your goodness would struggle over this place as we continue to worship you in glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Has God been good to you? Turn around, tell your neighbor, greet them how good God's been to you. Amazing, amazing. God is so good. So blessed with you guys being here today. The women's conference went so well this weekend. It was a joy, and I got to eat some food, and it was good. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, as you've noticed, we've been actually bringing in our partners so that you can hear from them and so that you can look at the opportunities that we have both in our community and abroad. And so through that, uh, it's my privilege this morning to ask Phil Prieto to come up with City Gates Ministries as he's going to share with us today. So. Give them what you got. I've heard so much about Church in the Woods. I've been wanting to get out here for a long, long time. And then a friend of mine pressured me. He set me up for just to speak to you guys today. That's no pressure. No pressure. I'm excited. If, if One thing I'd like everybody to do before we get started, I set up a, this is echoing really bad. Hello, hello, oh, oh, yeah, man, yeah, tune me down. I'm a street preacher, so my voice carries, and and when I get excited, it carries even more, and, and, and I've been preaching on the street for about 27 years, and we'll talk about that later on. It's been a, a, a huge blessing to be able to administer the gospel of Jesus Christ in the center of our city, and have never been told, no, you can't do this. The only thing that shut down City Gates Ministries was the pandemic in 27 years of ministering the gospel in the middle of the city. So if you haven't heard about City Gates Ministries, um, right over here, and I, you want me, you want me to go with the, the mic? I can go with the mic, Chris. I got my table set up over here, and we got some brochures. We got some information for uh, volunteer opportunities. City Gates Ministries is doing a ton of stuff right now in supplying the needs to families in need and individuals in need. So make sure you get our information. We also have some crosses and some hearts. Uh, feel free to take one, put it in your pocket. They're, they're meant to give to somebody that, that God would bring into your, your sphere of influence. So take a few if you need and make sure you pass them out. They're great opportunity um, pendants to, to just minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then if you don't want to do anything else, I put some candy on the table to tease you a little bit, okay? <laughs> just to get you out there. Amen? <laughs> Going to be speaking from 2 Kings uh, 4.1 today. And um, I, I just felt the Lord pressing on my heart to use this application. And if you have your Bibles, I'll be bringing the, the verses up on the screen and, and just go through some of what God has placed in my heart for this moment and, and just instilling God's spirit in you. My objective is to, is to have an overflowing of the Holy Spirit come inside each and every one of us and activate our heart and our soul for somebody else in need. And I love that about City Gates Ministries is, is that you are City Gates Ministries. You are City Gates Ministries. City Gates Ministries is a very community-driven ministry. It's 100% volunteer-supported 
and the numbers that we're going to go through and, and describing what you're doing for our community right now, it blows me away every time I, I, I think of, of the work that's being done right now. Amen? Father God, we just come to you right now. We open up your word. We ask, Father God, that you have your way. We ask your spirit to enter into us right now, Father God. Enter into this room. Fill our hearts. Overflow us, Father God, that, that we individually would know that you are speaking directly to us in the direction that we would go from this day forward. Father God, transform our hearts and our minds. Transform our souls as we minister your word. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Second Kings 4, 1 starts out this way. A certain woman of the wives of the sons and the prophets cried out to Elijah saying, your servant, my husband is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord and the creditor is coming to take my sons to be the, his slaves. So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you want? What do you have in the house? And he, she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. I would like to use this as a, as a, as a metaphor. In the days of Elijah, just so we get a picture of what's going on here. In the days of Elijah and, and, and Elijah... In Israel, the prophets of God gathered a group of, of God's workers called the sons of the prophets. And one of these sons of the prophets died. And the creditors were harassing the widow for the debt owed by, the seeking, by seeking to sell her to the sons as bond servants to pay his debt. And this was the word that the prophet Elijah to the widow who was so poor and in debt that she and her sons were about to be sold into slavery for the money they owed. She was in a desperate situation. And I want to take this story today and use it as an application to our own lives and our own ministries. I want to use City Gates Ministries as a compassionate response to how we serve and people in desperate situations. I brought this up. God will always use others to supply our needs. And I, and I, I wanted to make sure that we understood this because God uses someones in our life all the time. All the time. We are where we are today because those we have been influenced by have entered into our life and and that can go both ways can it we could be in a good influence of people or a bad influence right now this widow is being faced with both she's got a bad influence right now coming trying to change her life take her sons away and elijah on the other hand is the other influence Two influences working here. And I think that we can all agree on two things that all of us have in common. Number one, we all have a need, don't we? I mean, it doesn't matter where you are in life, how much money you make or, or what you do or where you're at. We all have a need. Would we agree on that? Second, is we all have the ability and desire to want to help someone in need. It was the characteristics of every human being born of God's image that has allowed us to have that want to help somebody. It was something that God created in each and every one of us. We are the image of God. Now, I'll touch on three objectives today. The first is circumstances. God wants to be included in your circumstance. In 2 Kings 4.1, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be a slave. One thing I know 
is our needs are never unknown to God. One of the lessons from this passage is regardless of who we are, the times in which we live, the, the problems that we face, there is no problem or need God cannot meet if we will simply trust and obey. Sometimes easier said than done, but God cares. God cares for each and every one of us. Most of the time, it's trusting in him for things that, that don't make sense. You know, I remember a time in the ministry where my wife and I were, were working. And the ministry was growing. And there was a time in the ministry where we had to make a decision. Do we cut back on the ministry? Or do I quit my job? And it was a crazy time because we were preparing to take three kids into college. We had a mortgage. We had all these things going on. And, 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 and I'm thinking, I can't stop growing. There's, there's people that need this ministry. And, and we prayed. And man, out of the bloom, we quit. I quit my job. Quit my job. 80% of my income just disappeared. And I'm thinking, man... If we it, thank God we got savings right now because in a year I'll be like one of those I serve during the, the pandemic 2020. I got my W 2 form, I'd never looked at my W 2 form, never had to. I'm getting to that age where I better start looking at these things, I guess. And 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 I'm looking at it, and and there's there's a mark that says zero income for two years. And I went to my wife and I said, look, man, they, they messed up, hon. I've worked all my life. There can't be two zeros here. What, what's going on here? She says, Phil, those were the two years you had quit your job and we had no income coming in. And God carried us through. God carried us through. We don't, I don't even remember struggling, to tell you the truth. The real issue is not the problem, is what I found. The issue is in our response to the Lord in the face of our problems. How we respond and how we react, this is the key issue. Interesting. Though her appeal was to the Lord, the widow sought help through Elijah. God usually meets the needs of his people through people. He's a networker. I was looking at statistics based on the network that God has created through this ministry. I had a friend of mine during the pandemic that wasn't working, and he's one of those analytical number guys, you know, and he says, Phil, you need numbers. And I said, why do I need numbers? And he says, because you need to know what you're doing. Says, why do I need that? I just know we're doing a lot. He says, well, let me help you with that. So he drew out all these graphs and for a year, we had to sign paperwork and hours and numbers. And, all, and then at the end of the year, he put these numbers together. Statistics blew me away. In 2021, over 24,902 hours were provided through the volunteers who are serving City Gates Ministries to reach out to help people in need. This benefited over 15,700. 17 people in 2021. <laughs> what blows me away on this is, is I started this ministry 27 years ago with 12 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, going downtown with a bunch of Jesus cra uh, tracks, feeling like an idiot. And I always went down there because God didn't tell me to stop See, we run on two things. We run on spiritual discernment, which, which is built in us. That's the, the thing that God gives us to tell us what's right or wrong, black or white, good or bad. And then we got this other thing in our flesh that's called emotion. And emotion will come and cover spiritual discernment right away. And my emotion during that time was saying, this isn't going to work. I don't even like these people. 
You know, and I'm out here giving them sandwiches and praying for them, and I'm thinking, man, what's going on? What's happening? And I'd come home, and I'd complain to my wife, man, you know, there's got to be something else. Has God told you to stop? No. Then go. I love my wife. <laughs> you know, a man got saved, and this is what happened. This is what started City Gates Ministries 27 years ago. After going downtown with, with the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, a man came up to me. In fact, he ended up serving the Union Gospel Mission before he died. But he came up to me, and, and, and he's, he's this hairy old man with a beard, and just, you know, it was not somebody that was attractive. And he comes over to me, and he says, I've been watching you. Okay. He said, you're here every single week at the same time serving lunches or sandwiches to these people and praying for them. Some of them laugh, and some of them receive, but, but, but you're here every week. He says, I want to know that God. And we sat on the back of my, my uh, on, on the corner of the, the van, and he ministered to me that day. He ministered to me that day, and I, 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 I invited him to church. And he came into the church with me, which was a very prestigious church that I was going to. They didn't allow these type, kind of people in the church. And, and, and I invited him in, and I always sit up in front because I don't like people taller than me in front of me, and everybody's taller than me. <laughs> so I sat in front, and I pulled up a chair, and I think he's going to sit next to me. He's got his backpack on, and he sits in the middle of the aisle. And I'm thinking, I, if I don't do something, the Gestapo team's going to come and carry this guy out. So I got up, and I sat in the middle of the aisle with him, and we had church together in the middle of the aisle. And, you know, I didn't realize that 150 people behind us witnessed the whole thing. And they were inspired. And so after service, they were asking me, Phil, what are you doing? And I told them, I'm just going downtown feeding people with peanut butter. Can I go? Yeah. And they would go, Phil, we need socks. They don't have any socks. They, we got socks. Someone else would come, we need coats. You know, we need this, we need that. Man, we got a fleet of trucks that goes downtown right now. Delivers about 1,500 pounds of clothes to those in need every week your clothes your donations come to city gates ministries and saturday they are separated and restock the trucks every week to supply those that are serving the street that are praying for people so that they have the tools that they need to do their job their ministry we do haircuts on the street we helped a lady during the pandemic she couldn't cut hair Go figure. So during that time, we were paying her rent and getting her through. And afterwards, she says, Phil, man, I just want to give back. You do so much. How can I give back? I say, you cut hair, don't you? She's been cutting hair on the street, and it's, it's so beautiful to see what she's developed from the ministry. The food ministry last year delivered 644 deliveries which supply people that are struggling in their homes to make ends meet. And the food that we gather comes from Safeway, Albertsons, Trader Joe's, Costco. And we give over two weeks supply of food and provision to families that are calling into the ministry. Over 2,500 pounds of food are delivered directly to people in need for the sole purpose to get inside the homes and pray. During that time, 2,207 individuals were fed with provision. We started Lunch Bag Ministry because they shut us down during the pandemic, and there was so much food available during that time. And I thought, well, while we figure out the mandates and how to get by these, which took me about eight weeks, too long, we started delivering lunch bags to the street. 50 lunch bags a day went out to the street for eight weeks. Over 6,768 lunch bags were delivered to 
people on the street during the pandemic. And it was an amazing thing because, because the lunch bags had two days supply of food. I mean, they, got, they got a sandwich and they got wraps and they got lettuce and they got mixes and pastries and, and they had big bags of food, man. And it, it was so awesome to see the volunteers who go out every day and they come back with their stories. Our next point here is enough. What you have is enough for God. You may not have anything, but he'll use you right where you're at. 2 Kings 4.2, so Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. What can I do for you? That's a common question that City Gates Ministries ask people in need. What can I do for you? And it, our mission isn't to enable people. That's, that's not what we do. We do supply their needs, but more so, our objective is to show them if they receive some of the recommendations we share, beyond what we give them, we'll help them. And one of the recommendations that we share is prayer. We don't do anything without prayer. I have people that send out bag lunches and food and provision. We have a furniture ministry that housed three people last week with everything. And I always tell our volunteers, if you're going to go and just give and not pray, don't give. Don't give. We're known for our prayer. We're known for the things that God has given us and enabled us to do. And yet our mission is, is, is about the people in supplying their need. Everyone needs prayer. Everyone. Regardless of what or where they may have come from, bringing Christ into the circumstance is going to allow God to work a lot better than you and I trying to figure out the impossible, confusing situations that they're in. I was at Albertsons the first day we served at Albertsons. We're at Albertsons every year. And by the way, in November, we'll be at Albertsons again, seven days a week, two months straight, eight hours a day. Last year, our time at Albertsons, and if you served out there, thank you so much. We were granted $25,000 from the people that came to our tables during those two months. And those gift cards right now are supplying fuel for families that are struggling to get to work. Huge blessing. But the first day I was there, 13 years ago, Albertsons gives me this, this open door of opportunity to, to, to host their store, sponsor their event, buy bags. And I'm at the table. Not 15 minutes, a guy comes into the Albertsons store and he's sheet white. And I could tell he was just distressed. And I said, man, it looks like... You saw a ghost. He says, yeah. He says, I just came from the hospital. He said, I've been diagnosed with lung cancer, and they're giving me three, six months. And I don't know how I'm going to go home and tell my wife of three years and my 18-month-old 18 child. And at that very moment, spiritual discernment kicked in. Pray for this man. And immediately after, emotion. You can't pray in this store, Phil. This isn't a Christian venue, and you're here hosting this. You can't pray here. Let's pray. And you know, I had no idea what was going to happen next. This man fell to his knees. And he raised his hands to the Lord, crying out to God, Lord, forgive me. I, I, didn't, I didn't sign up for this, and I don't know what to do. And he's crying in tears, not quiet. If you've ever been to Albertsons, when you walk into the store, you see our table. That's the first thing you see. And this man is crying out to the Lord, and, and, and I asked him, have, have, you, have you accepted Christ in your heart? He said, no, and he's crying. We, we, we accepted Christ into his heart, and now I'm crying. 
we, we embrace, and eventually he moves on, and I look over, and the, the manager of the store is 10 feet away, and I'm thinking, we're done. <laughs> you know, the guy came up to me, and he put his hand on my shoulder. He said, Phil, that was the most amazing thing that we've ever witnessed. You know, I got to tell you that we have favor, you and I. As Christians, we have favor. God has given us the keys to the city. And if we get past our religious beliefs and focus on our faith in Christ, God will open up doors that will allow him to do what he has called each and every one of us to do. And that's somewhere in Matthew, I think. Disciples. Disciples. I know, I know a lot of us are, are stuck on this thing where, where you know, we got to go save people. That's God's job. And if he uses me during that time, man, I'm blessed. Thank you, Lord. But really, the word says we're to disciple. We're to teach those in the way to go. And God has given City Gates Ministries thousands of commodities to allow us to disciple. Disciple. Disciple means that, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to secure somebody in need. I'm going to secure the maid that is struggling. It's, a wonder, it's, it's wonderful to come to realize God is the master of circumstances and will meet you and uses what you have. Even if you don't have anything. It's awesome. For the widow, Elijah had a simple solution. Activate her faith. Get her doing something. Give her her direction to do something would allow her to accomplish what God had already predestined. And a lot of us get stuck in that, don't we? A lot of us get stuck in thinking, man, you know what? I'm praying, but nothing's happening. Why? What's going on? God wants you to activate the, the, the faith to move forward. Our third is response. When we make our needs known, out of our response, God responds. God will always respond. Kings 4.3, when he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, do not gather just a few. There was a requirement there, wasn't there? A requirement. God knows our need before we ask. In fact, he knows from all eternity our needs before we ask. But Elijah put the widow in a position to pay her debt and to maintain herself and her family. This was done by a miracle only by what she would respond to. The miracle wouldn't have happened if she would have said, I, you know, I don't believe in that. I don't think that's going to work for me. I'd rather someone come in and pay my debt. It doesn't work like that with God. Got a, got a mobile home ministry that we're doing right now. In fact, we've done 11 of them. And I, I don't know how we got hooked up with this because it's expensive. But we get these free mobile homes. And we put them on estates. And we create local missions projects out of them. I got one going right now. And if you want to sign up for this right now, it would be awesome that we get this mobile home finished, refurbished for the next client. We just signed the title of our last mobile home to the recipient that was living in a mobile home that needed to be uh, demolished. He now has his own mobile home. In fact, the crosses that are at the table are what he makes for extra money. And he's made over 5,000 of them and sent them around the world. But this mobile home that we're doing now is going to be another blessing to a man that hasn't seen his daughter in five years. And he won't be able to see her until he has stable housing. What's awesome about this mobile home situation is that we get to go bless 
this man while he works on his mobile home. And we get to write scripture on the walls before we put carpet down or paint the walls. And we get to bless him as he sees his house come into fruition. You know, we are never separated from God. Never separated from his riches. Never separated from his grace. All our separation from God is in ourselves. It's in ourselves. It is our faith that fails, not his promise. Not his promise. He gives us more than we ask. Where there are empty vessels, there is enough of God to fill them. And I'm, I'm, I'm one that knows this because I tried out giving God once and I had a logistics problem. There was so much stuff that came in, I didn't know where to put it. So I had to back up, Lord, you know, just level out. Let me give it away as you bring it in. And he does that every way. And City Gates <laughs> gives out everything it receives. Everything. But for everyone that receives, man, prayer is number one. Number two, City Gates is always asking, what can you give back? Most of the people that serve City Gates Ministries today have been recipients of City Gates Ministries, including myself. What you do for others is more important than what you receive from somebody else. But what you do for others is the basis of receiving everything you will ever need. Do I need to say that again? Catch this one. This is a good nugget. What you do for others is more important than what you receive from somebody else. And what you do for others is the basis of receiving everything that you need. In other words, until I get my mind off myself and put it on somebody else, I will stay destitute in my need. It's when I begin to put my need onto somebody else and forget the place that I'm at, my own need, is when God will come in and bless. And I tell you something, God shows up in your inconvenience. Matthew 25, 40 says, And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, as in much as you did to one of these least, of these, my brethren, you did to me. It is from this context God works. One thing to consider, all those borrowed vessels also had to be empty before they could be filled with oil, right? There are times we can be too full of ourselves, too strong in ourselves, too arrogant for God to really do his work in us. And Charles Spurgeon put it this way, a full Christ is for empty sinners and for empty sinners only. It is not our emptiness, but our fullness which can hinder the outgoings of free grace. Wow. God can work miracles through emptiness. It's faith. And if faith is ready to receive his filling, his strength is perfected in our weakness. We can learn a lot from that. The pandemic showed us a lot. You know, it's interesting when I say that God gave us favor on the street. Administering the gospel on the street for 27 years with a loudspeaker and having the pandemic the only thing that shut us down. In fact, in 2019, we do a foot washing. And I bring in a ministry called Samaritan's Feet out of Charlotte, Carolina, and they, 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 they come in, we buy 500 pairs of shoes. So we had a lot of shoes. And if you look at 500 pairs of shoes, 500 people, 120 people serving, my location was being leased out by a construction company that was, that, that was fixing the transit station at this time. And we were, we were set up to do this foot washing. And all of a sudden, I don't have a place. They, they stole my church for a while. How dare them, you know, leasing my place. 
So I went to the city and I said, man, you know, uh, I need permits to close down Adams Street because we're going to be doing an event. It's an, a, very, a very important event, and, and we need to have this street closed down. Can you give me permits for that? And, and, and the city said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'm, I'm going to give away a bunch of shoes. They asked again, are you selling anything? I mean, what do you mean giving away a bunch of shoes? I said, I'm going to give away a bunch of shoes, and, and on top of that, I'm going to wash the feet of every single person that gets a new pair of shoes. And if you need a new pair of shoes, come on down. You know what? The city gave us the permit. And I'm thinking, you know what? Where else but the Bible does it talk about washing feet? And yet the city said, yeah, Phil, that sounds like a good idea. They gave us favor. God has given us the keys to the city. The widow was destitute. The only thing she had was this oil, which was used for a various number of things. I mean, anointing the body for cooking. Sometimes it was used for burials. But there is a principle here which we find repeated in Scripture. The way God generally meets our needs is to take what we have and to multiply it. And as we turn our lives over to Him and obey the principles of His Word, multiplication begins to happen. This is true in our talents, in our gifts, our finances, our, our physical assets. The constant flow of oil from the lampstand portrayed the constant flow of God's power emphasized in this story. And rather the focus in this passage is on the way that the Lord takes what he has given us, like our talents and our gifts and, and our physical abilities, financial provision. He multiplies them. If we have faith to trust him to take what we have to multiply. And you don't have to have much. 12 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We need to investigate what we have in all areas of our lives. Using those blessings as a good steward of God's grace. However, provisions and the financial multiplication of what is needed to do the work that God will do. Faith to trust him. To bless and to provide. Will come as he sees fit. If we are faithful. And continuing to administer the gifts that we have in each and every one of us has a gift. Each and every one of us has been called. For us as individuals, Elijah was a man who had a heart to serve. He served others wherever they were. He did not discriminate. We live in a world of discrimination, don't we? He did not minister to people based on how they might promote him or provide for him. He was only concerned that the people might know and experience God's grace and power in their lives. That's all he had. And how available am I? How available are you? Is the question we leave today for ourselves to ponder. The scripture in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, he said, my grace is made sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Man, I tell you, I have felt so insufficient in so many ways Well, providing. My gift is to provide people with opportunities to serve people that are in need. And sometimes you, you, you don't even know what you're getting into. You don't know who's going to come at us. I got a call the other day from, from a lady, and she's quadriplegic. And so by the 
financial donations that you have provided City Gates Ministries, we've been able to supply her with her bed pads and her diapers and food. And she's always calling me and saying how grateful she is. And Bill, I wish I could do something for you. And I said one day, arrogantly, well, why aren't you? And she arrogantly comes back to me, Bill, I'm in bed. I can't get out of bed. And I said, so God has something for you too. And she got upset and she hung up the phone. Oops. About 10 minutes later, she calls me up. So, Pastor Phil, what would you have me do? And I'm thinking, oh, man, <laughs> I wasn't ready for this one. <laughs> Her name's Barbara. If you get a call from Barbara, Barbara has given, been given our list of financial donors. And she calls our financial donors to just say thank you. Because of you, I am being provided for. She's a wonderful lady. We live in a world which is basically opposed to the work of God. But the problem we face is not God's supply of oil or in God's ability to meet the needs through his people. The real problem the real problem lies in our faith, in our obedience and submission to react individually and corporately to do the things that God has commissioned each and every one of us to do in the first place. And we can leave here today and ask ourselves, am I being filled to the point of overflowing that the overflowing might reach somebody that needs the same blessing, the same filling? Or am I an empty vessel that needs to receive from the overflowing of somebody else? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We, we thank you that you, you have given us something to ponder today, individually, where would you want me to serve next? Individually, where would you want me to be in this next season that you have provided? And I pray, Father God, that there is a conviction of the heart today. Maybe I'm already doing more than I need to do, and I need to share what I'm doing with somebody else so that you can place me in a different place. Or maybe I'm not sharing at all at this time. Maybe life has just, just kept me too busy to do any more than I need to do. Regardless, Father God, I know that we are here as Christians to reach somebody in need. And whether it's with tangible item that will supply their, their, their place or whether it's just a smile, hi, Jesus loves you today. It doesn't matter to you how we give as long as we give. And I pray that each and every one of us will remember that. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. amen. So a few things to take away from what Phil, I, for about 20 years now, I've just watched Phil outrun me out there on the street. We have Charlene here today. Uh, these are opportunities for us to give in ways that maybe you've never even dreamed of doing yourself. But we've been out there on the streets uh, with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but what we actually hold to and every elder in this house believes in that prayer first, we commit to the fact that these are both ministries that will share the gospel. We don't want to just feed people uh, and fill their tummy and have them go to hell. Uh, we desire for people to be set free, made whole, and delivered because we were willing to go out and meet them where they're at and not just invite them to where we are. So these are opportunities that we're going to see through the summer where we can be a part of the feeding. We can be a part of ministries. We did the backpack ministry last year. Maybe we'll be a part of foot washing services. This will be uh, all the opportunities that are going to come out of this. It's just outreach. That's what we want to be. But I take away a couple things today. Maybe you have been so self-preserving and so much in your own headspace of what can God do for me because of what you're going through right now. And I hear so clearly today that God can work through those situations by you, rather than focusing on yourself, look at how you can meet the needs of others around you and let him just take care of you. 
And maybe somebody in this room will help be that answer to your prayer. And then when we pray, may we pray for the needs of others as well. May God continue to use us in our life with whatever he has given us. And we need to be people that are willing to respond. And maybe you'll have great stories like Charlene and Phil because the life is an adventure with Christ. The things that you never thought possible, the miracle is there. I don't think I go a day without seeing a miracle of God. And I know that to be the truth. And it's because he is willing and able. And, you know, sometimes we just need to press beyond ourselves, our comfort, and the things that we think are more important to us. Maybe your life is too busy and you're working too hard. Maybe you think that it's about you because you need to relax a little bit more. But I'll tell you, when you give God your time, invest, and give him the beginning, he can do the rest. Just start with what he asks of you. Just be obedient to that. And let's do it together because we're one body. So because they promote the gospel, we have a, a table out there. And I heard a cry for and need today. So if you want to give to the mobile uh, home ministry, I'm excited to see somebody else uh, get a home. Because we have people even in our body that are in need of that. So into that. So into the, and, and see that God can't do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask. So we know that God can work through that. And there are many people that are in transition looking for housing. Many people that are looking for change and meeting of those needs. And we can be a part of that. So let's do that today. Amen? So we prayed. Would you stand with us as we end the service together? I spoke last week, Christ is the one that gave us the manifest understanding that he is father to us as well, and that he is the way to the father. So let's pray together. Our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen amen one little miracle this week so i was out here and i was passing camacho middle school and they have this mound of dirt thousands of yards of dirt and it's very expensive, is it not, Dan, to go driving dirt around right now with diesel costs? We got a few guys in the church with trucks like that. And I walked over to them and I said, hey, what are you doing with your dirt? And they said, well, we're taking it down around the way. And they're paying to get rid of it. And I said, we could use some topsoil out at our place. And I think we're a little bit closer. And I uh, thought it was over. But they came and said, you know what? We'll bring it out for you. And not only that, we'll bring it out for free. And not only that, we'll bring a, a, something to go grade it for you as well. And so it's a company with a believer that's the superintendent. And he came out and he goes, this is a great thing that God's doing. Love to see that. Ken's been helping us, continuing to grade out where we can. And we're just going to get bigger machines out here and keep working until we see God's vision accomplished. Amen? Amen. So God is good. If you haven't seen a miracle, come up here and we'll pray for you. So, but God is good. And I know that God is working. Enjoy this heat. But enjoy one another's company. Don't leave without being known. But if you have a need in your life, please come and get prayed for. And we love you. Thank you. God bless. We'll see you next week.